Well, this evening, I want to talk to you about the colors of Christmas. If I ask you what those colors are, probably you could name most of these, if not all. And um, probably you have these colors in your home, in your neighborhood, outside your house. You see these colors when you shop. You see these colors everywhere. But tonight I want to talk to you about maybe some spiritual meanings of these colors of Christmas. Let's just get started. The first one is red. I think if you look around this auditorium, you see a lot of red, don't you? I mean, you see the red skirt, you see the red skirt on the uh, baptismal um, tank, you see red on the Christmas tree, you, if the lights were on, you'd see red uh, uh, along the, um, uh, the side there, you, you see red um, uh, on the poinsettias. What does this red represent? It represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin accord, sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Really, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And, and, and God said, I'm going to make a way so that mankind can truly get forgiveness. So that mankind truly can have peace and so that mankind can spend an eternity in this place called heaven. But it's going to take the shedding of blood. So it's God coming down in human flesh and being, being willing to die on the cross and shedding his own blood for us. Matthew 26, 28 says, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And this is at a time when Jesus was having communion or Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, with his disciples. And, and we just celebrated that. We just, we just took the juice, and, and which represented the blood of Christ. Well, the second color that I want us to, to look at is the green. And the green represents the new life that Jesus Christ offers. If you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. So when you see green, it usually represents new life everywhere, right? I mean, in the spring, and that's something I'm kind of hanging on waiting for, <laughs> personally. But when you see spring come, what do you, what do you, how do you know it's spring? One of, the reason is, uh, one of the reasons that we know it's spring is because everything gets green. It represents new life. Well, the same thing happens with us. We get to have new life. You know, the Bible says that we are really uh, dead in our sins before we find Christ. And after we find Christ, it says that uh, we have this new life. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. And it's wonderful that we can have a new life. You know, we don't have to live a life of defeat. We don't have to live a life where we're ruled by the power of sin. We can be delivered. We can be set free. We can have a new life. And we find that new life <clears throat> that's in Christ. A third color that we see a lot around Christmas is gold. So, we, you know, if you look around here, I, mean, you know, I, mean, I didn't maybe mention the green, but we find the green on the trees. We find green on the wreaths. I mean, outside the church and in here. But we also see the gold, and if the lights were on, you could see there's gold bulbs on the tree. There's gold bulbs on the, on the baptismal. 
and there's gold all around this auditorium. And it represents, again, the royalty of Jesus as king. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, this is, is the time where the wise men or the, the kings came to bring gifts to the Christ child. Now, this didn't happen on the night that Christ was born. It, it, you know, they were starting to search for him. They saw the star when Christ was born, but it took them a while to find him. Most, most theologians believe that it, he was about a year and a half years old or so. But, but look at this, this verse. On coming to the house, not the manger, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Kind of reminded me of a, of a story where the uh, child was in junior church or children's church, and when he came home, his, his, his mama said, what would you learn in, in church this morning? What would you learn in children's church? And he said, I learned that there were some kings that presented Jesus with some gifts, gold and Frankenstein and myrrh. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly Frankenstein, was it? But these three gifts at that particular time in history were, were, were expensive gifts, gifts that you would go before a king and bow down before that king and you would offer these gifts to that king. You know, I don't even know if they understood that or everybody around understood that. I, as, we, as the song earlier talked about Mary, I'm not sure her, her and Joseph understood all this. But one thing we do know that, that God, you know, had those wise men to go and, and, and present them with these gifts because Jesus is the king. We find in Revelation 19.16... Talking about the time when Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Because he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he is worthy of our praise. You know, when I pray in the mornings, it's like, I always try to, to praise him at the beginning of my prayers. And one of the things that I usually say is, I say, Lord, I praise you because you are worthy to be praised. And he is worthy for us to bow down before him and give him our lives. He is our master. He is our ruler. He is the one that we are willing to be submissive to and give our entire lives as long as we live. Well, the fourth color is the color white. White represents the purity of Jesus and he being divine and also how he can make our hearts pure through his sacrificial death. You know, the center candle here is white. You know, we have, I mean, we have the white stars uh, above the Christmas tree and, and, and we have white bulbs on the Christmas tree in this auditorium. But white represents his purity. Look in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Listen, none of us are perfect, but the Son of God is perfect. When he walked upon this earth, he never sinned. It says he was tempted like we are, but he never sinned. Why? Because he was divine. He was the Son of God. But also we see in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26, such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He is pure. But you know what? He also wants us to live lives of purity. He wants us each and every day to say, Lord, I want you to search my heart and help me to live the best life that I can live for you. 
you know, His Holy Spirit, when His Holy Spirit comes into our life, the Scripture tells us that the early disciples, when that happened, their hearts were purified by faith. Well, God, when He comes in and lives through us, He helps us to live the lives that we should be living. And you know, as, as I've told you many times, we are the only Bible that some people read. If people are going to see what the Christian life's all about, they ought to be able to look at us and say, there is a person, not a perfect person, but a person who is allowing God to work through them. And what I'm seeing when I look at you is I am seeing a life that's being transformed every day. And we ought to be reminded that, that God expects us to live lives that are pleasing to Him. Well, the, fi the final color is yellow, and it's represented here with flames. If you look at the flames that are here on these candles, and they look a little whiter here, but if, if the lights were on, you can see these lights on the trees are more of a yellowish color. You see these, um, these, these uh, candles that you were given when you came in. Uh, and, and I'm not asking you to turn them on yet, but uh, when you turn those on, you can see that they are yellow. Well, it ought to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. Look in John chapter 8 and verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, there are a lot of lights that are shining in our world. And there's most of those lights you don't want to follow. Those lights are saying, follow me. I'm trying to, to mark out a path for you to walk. And when you walk down many of those paths, they lead to destruction. They lead to disappointment. But when you follow Christ, He will never fail. Because he is faithful. He is the light. He is the one that can show us the way to how to live on this earth. His path leads us to that place, that final place called heaven, where, where people that are followers of Jesus Christ will end up. Well, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, he goes a step far, farther. He not only says that I am the light, I, you can follow me. But he says to his disciples, look what he says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Again, we're the only Bible some people read. If people are going to see the path that they ought to, to walk, how are they going to know that that path exists? Well, Jesus says there is a way, and that is you. I tell you all the time, we are it. J Jesus is not walking on the streets of Richmond Hill tonight. He's not walking in Savannah. He's not walking anywhere on this earth. Nobody can say, wow, you ain't going to believe who I ran into at the mall. I mean, some people might say that, but it's not true if they say they saw Jesus. So how are they going to see Jesus? How are they going to find Jesus? It's only through us. And Jesus told his disciples, you're the light of the world. And Jesus is still telling us today, you are that light. If people are going to come out of darkness and they're going to have hope, it's going to be because they see that hope through you. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. There's people all around this room tonight that <laughs> that can be said to you, right? <laughs> you were once darkness. You were once blinded. You were once without God. You were once without hope. But now you are the light. 
And God wants to use you tremendously. And he challenges us to live as children of light. That's a challenge for each, each of us every day, isn't it? You know what I think we ought to do every morning when we wake up? We ought to be saying, Lord, today help me to be a child of light. Help me to offer hope to somebody that I see today. Well, as we close, and, and we're going to sing our last song, I, I, uh, I want to challenge you. You're going to be leaving this place tonight, and you're, some of you are going to your homes. Some of you are going, I don't know if you can go shopping this late. There may be something open. Some of you may be going and looking at Christmas lights. But when you leave this place, you will see these collars. And I hope as you look at these collars that you will start thinking about the collars of Christmas that we talked about. And you will be thankful that Jesus Christ did come to earth 2,000 some years ago as your Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time this evening. We're thankful that we can be reminded of, about you, about the true meaning of Christmas. And Lord, that as we look upon these colors, that we will be reminded of these spiritual truths. And Father, I pray for each one of us tonight in this building, if there be anyone that does not know you, that you will speak to their hearts and you will draw them to yourself. And Lord, as we even leave this place in just a few moments, may we truly go out shining our lives before those outside this building where others can see you through us. In Christ's name we pray.